Talk Birdie to me with Nico Hearn and Mark Allen is back live on Tuesday, January 16. And it wouldn't happen without our great mates at Ping. You can see your local golf pro for a Ping Club fitting. It's a great experience. You'll love it. Just ask Nico Hearn. He did it a couple of months ago and still raves about it. And the Golf Clearance Outlet. You're looking for a great price on great gear? Well, that's exactly what you'll get. Nick and Mark had a lot of fun with the top fives over the last year or so. Well, to be fair, they might have had the odd top six or even top ten, but mostly top fives. Let's revisit this one. Top five this week, and it's courtesy of David Craig, who mentioned he wanted his top five, remind me again? Top five redos of shots that uh, pros would like to do again that's if they had the right. chance. That's, that's right. correct. That's yeah, right. I think he mentioned uh, Tom Watson yeah, at did. Birkdale, 2009. He said mm. that second shot. I was thinking about putting it into my top five, but I, I'm not because Tom said he hit the shot exactly how that's he wanted. exactly right. I think he'll take the bounce again. But he wouldn't take the shot back again. Mm. He hit the shot perfect. So, yeah, it didn't make the top yeah. five because it was he wasn't going to take a nine instead of an eight because he hit mm. the right club. It's just he got a bad bounce. So. All right. So we're, we're we starting at six okay. B, are we? We're so, not no. really. <laughs> well, Mick, Mickelson, I mentioned earlier. Yeah. I was going to say his second shot he should have redone. Should have just pitched out, knocked yeah. it on the green. Makes four, he wins. If he doesn't, he's in a playoff with That's Jeff it. Ogilvy. So that That's was the it. one for me there. But that was number six. Same tournament. I know this man would love to have it again, and he's your favourite golfer. No. Colin Montgomery. <laughs> the, the shot out of a divot, his second shot. Second shot. He wasn't in a divot, I don't think. He said he was in a divot. Really? Yeah, he oh, said he okay. was in a divot. Well, he changed from 6-iron to 7-iron, allowing for the adrenaline. But the yeah. problem was he had to wait, because I think he might have been playing with VJ Singh. Yeah. And if he'd have just gone up and hit it straight away, he would have hit a good shot yeah. in the middle of green. But he had yeah. to wait and wait and wait. Monty, when he waits, is not a good idea. Yeah. Flared it right, ended up making double bogey. And losing the golf oh, tournament. I'm with you. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think. I think it was a very, very old divot that had repaired. Yeah. That he was just, you know, he's a, he, he, he does complain every once in a while. <laughs> every once in a while, yeah. you love to poke Monty, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I do. Every chance do. you get, you yeah. get a bit of a jab. I should, do. Should we get him on the show as well? Yeah, let's get him on the show. <laughs> Number four uh, was mentioned earlier by Eric uh, Greg Norman. Which one? 1986, the four iron. Into yeah. the final yeah. green at Augusta. Yeah. If he'd have hit that on the green, made par. He was in a playoff yeah. with the great Jack Nicklaus. Yeah. Did you see the interview he did when he actually went around um, Augusta again? And they oh the ninety six. Yeah, one? He, mm. he said it was a five iron. You yeah. should have just. I mean, he, he tried to smooth the four iron in there. He'd birdied four in a row. Yep. He was trying to birdie five in a row to beat Jack Nicholas at the Masters, and it was probably just too good a scenario in his head that he went for mm. it. But when he goes back, he goes, I shouldn't have tried the 35. I should, I should have just hit the five iron. Even if it came up short, two putt, I mean, a, I mean I'm in a playoff. Yeah, exactly. I tried to beat him in a playoff. Yeah. But the thought of having five in the road to finish the Masters yeah. to beat Jack was probably too much for him. And you think about playoffs in the history of golf, Greg Norman, oh. Jack Nicholas. Oh. I mean, we never got... We never, never got, got Tiger it. Woods, Phil Mickelson, did no, we? No, not in the playoffs. Um, you never get the two greatest. No. That's the thing. That would have been one of the greatest playoffs in the history of yep. golf. Yep. Anyway. I think, I think the, one, the biggest playoff ever is Tiger v. John Daly. Remember that one? Oh, it was in at the Amex. Yeah. Yeah, I played right. that tournament in, uh, at Harding Park. That was the yeah. biggest one ever. And apparently uh, John Daly lost the playoff. Got in his car, went straight to Las Vegas, yep. and lost every cent that he made that day. Yep. Eight hundred thousand. He's yep. gone. Yep, went straight to Vegas. Uh, okay, Ooh. that was number he, four. He, he was very unlucky. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> number three, uh, we had this mentioned earlier. Jean Vandeveld oh, at Carnoustie, 1999 Open Championship. Which now, shot. okay, so the tee shot, I have no issue with. He hit the driver and it bounced over the burn. He yes. got, he got lucky. Got lucky. But you kind of need to bomb it down there anyway. It's yeah. a long hole. Yeah. The second shot for me, the two iron, it wasn't a four iron, it was a two, two iron. iron. He tried to clear the burn and he thought, I'll bail right into the grandstand. Yeah. I kind of get that, but it wasn't the right play. If his caddy had have said, look, here's a wedge and hit wedge, wedge onto the green, three yeah. putt, and yeah. you win the golf tournament. Simple as that. Can I, can I, can yeah, can, go have on. Have we got the protest siren, please? Did please. You, did you play that week? No. No. Okay. That week, the fairways were like this. I get it. And... And where he would have had to lay up to, they narrowed the fairway and it was really humpy and bumpy. I don't think he could have hit the wedge and got it to stop. It's a wedge off a fairway. Yeah, I know. I, I don't mean, think... I, this, well, okay. If, there if, was a couple of holes. Like, there was one hole. Okay, there was okay. a 270-yard run out and we were hitting six iron off the tee so it wouldn't run through the 70, I the get 270. It. I it was, get it. It was out of control. Hard. Okay. Hit the lob wedge 50 metres to the left yeah, and then well, hit a eight iron on it. I don't mind that. Okay. It doesn't matter. It was, yeah. the, it was the wrong choice I, in my opinion. I don't reckon he could have hit 130 yard wedge 
Okay. And made it stop. All right. But the 50 yarder. Yeah. I'm with you. Very sensible. Okay. Okay, that was number three. Had to break it's taken a there. while. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> number two. Yes. The most uh, famous missed two putt, uh, two footer in the game. Doug Sanders. No, that was a three footer. Oh. Two footer to win the Masters. Oh, Scott Hoke. Scott Choke, as yes. he called it, as he called himself later on. Nineteen eighty nine oh. in the playoff against Faldo on the tenth green, he had a two foot downhill putt left to right. Bit of a smelly two foot. Yeah. But, yeah, it wasn't good. But he had a two-footer, then he had a four-footer. Yeah, I know. He did well to hold it coming back. Jeez, a couple of tournaments. He was, I mean, Raymond Floyd hit it into the pond on 11. Scott yeah. Hoke and hit Faldo a two-footer. Yep. It's handed Faldo two masters. And then, you know, and and, and uh, Norman shot 78. Yep. 96. There's well, three masters. Thank you very much. Then we get Nick Faldo on. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to him about... <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't have won any. ...being gifted two <laughs> US masters. How, how many times do you reckon Scott Hoke has laid in bed at night and replayed that shot in his mind? Oh, yeah. So I he was... can't imagine. Scott was a member at Arworth, where I was, and I used to see Scott down there all the time practicing, yeah. and he's possibly one of the more negative people that you'll ever meet. Yeah. He never yeah. brought it up, though, I will say that, but he always complained about yeah. his game or something. So, yeah. Anyway, I, okay. I, I went to dinner with him once after a New Zealand Open. He came out and played especially. It wasn't long after that happened. Yep. Um, and we were all, it was, like it, was, it was still raw. Anyway, we came out, we went to this restaurant in New Zealand, and apparently the golfers used to go there after every tournament that they, they would play in Auckland. So he knew the golfers. He was a golfer himself. He came out and he brought all these beautiful, he just put everything down and he said, Oh, Scott Hoke, you joke, you joke. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we just couldn't believe what he did. No. And he just got Hoke, he's just there, he's just shaking his head, the poor bugger, and the yep. rest of us, we didn't know where to look or what to do. You kind of got to laugh, though, don't you, really? <laughs> After yeah. a while. Well, oh, I think it is. And my number one, you <laughs> mentioned it earlier, but 1970, the Open Championship, Doug yep. Sanders, yep. three footer, Lee Trevino standing to the side. Yep. When he went to pick up whatever was whatever in his line, was, yeah. you could see Trevino just back away going, no. Yep. And then he ultimately missed it. Yep. And, you know, the famous story about afterwards where he. He would get asked, look, you know, Doug, do you ever think about it? And he says, no, nah, no, I don't think about it much. I often go five minutes without thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the, Rob, uh, what is it, insult to injury? The next day when Jack Nicholas beat yes. him in the playoff, Jack holds, Threw the putter up. Jack holds the putter in the last, throws the putter up in the air in celebration, and the putter came down and landed on Doug Sanders' head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, a, he was a legend of the game. Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen. They're back on Tuesday, January 16 for another big year of Talk Birdie Simi. We'll see you then.